In order to provide the best performance for this NetSuite application, NetSuite uses governance usage model. So this governance usage are tracked on two different levels. One is at script level and another one is at API level. Now let's see what is the script level governance usage. So go to your NetSuite help center and search for suite script governance and limits. And under this section, you will have one link called as script type usage unit limits. Open this link and also open suite script 2.x API governance. So here we have script type usage unit limits. So this has all different types of scripts and their respective usage units. So in this table, it also provides you some more detailed information about those uh, usage units for those particular scripts. So I would recommend you to go through all the notes for each and every script type. So in this sheet, I have gathered all different types of script type which we commonly use in scripting. And I have mentioned all the respective usage units and I have separated MapReduce because it works in different way. So the next one we're going to look into is API level. So we have already opened the API level governance. So in this video, I will make use of two APIs, which is record.load. And if you see this record.load API will consume around 10 units for transaction records and two units for custom records and five for other records. In the same way, I'm going to make use of record.save API. And even this record.save API is going to make use of 20 units for transaction records. So in this video, we will take an example of schedule script and we will see what happens in the script if it exceeds 10,000 usage units. Let's say I want to load a sales order. So now I will just navigate to transactions, sales, and I will click on the list of sales orders. Now let's say I want to edit this particular sales order. Now I just click on this edit. Now the transaction is getting loaded on my browser. So this is that record.load. Now let's say I want to save the sales order. I, I know I haven't made any changes, but still I will save the sales order. So now the record has successfully saved in NetSuite. Now let's quickly take an example of this schedule script, which has the maximum usage limit of 10,000. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to write a schedule script, which is going to perform loading the transaction record and saving the transaction record. We are not going to modify any transaction record, but we are just going to load the transaction and save it finally. Now, right now I have different set of scenarios. Now for one record to load and save, it is going to consume around 30 units. So in this case, if I check the remaining, which is 10,000 minus 30, which is going to give me around 9,907. So still there is a lot of space in my script where I can do some multiple operations. So same way, if I try to do it for 10 records, for 10 transactions records, if I try to do the load and save, it's going to consume around 300 units. There will be still remaining of 9,700. So the same goes for the remaining set of transactions. So let's say, for example, if I do it for 333 records, it's going to consume around 9,990 units and the remaining units will be 10. So now let's say we have 334 records. In this case, if you see, it's going to consume around 10,020 units and the remaining units is minus 20, which means we have exceeded this particular 10,000 units. In this case, it's already exceeded the usage unit. And on the other side, if you see, we have around 335 records where it has consumed around 10,050 units and the remaining for this particular one is minus 50. So I don't think so we'll be getting any error for all of this particular scenarios, which is like first four different scenarios. We won't get any error. So let's say it will be good. Script will not throw any error. So now let's take a look at our small script, which we have done. So this is the basic syntax of the schedule script. So, and this is the main entry point function for this particular schedule script. And I have these two modules. One is record module and the other one is runtime module. This record module, I'm going to use it to load the transaction record. And I'm going to use the save API to save the transaction record. So let's write our code now. So I'm just going to add a very basic try catch block. If there is any error in this schedule script, I'm going to log the message of this error. Okay. So let's add our first line of code. So here, if you see, I'm trying to get the current script, which is this particular script instance. And this particular API, which is get current script is not going to consume any units. So this will be considered as zero units. And I have added a log 
and this log is going to give me the remaining usage after running this particular API. So if this first line of code runs, when I see the remaining usage, it should be showing zero at this particular level. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop. So if you see, I started the loop for loop where I'm trying to load 334 records. So I'm going to use this particular record.load API to load the sales order transaction. And the ID of the sales order is 59. So in our case, this is the sales order which I'm going to use. You can see the ID here, which is 59. And let me go back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the sales order. And now if I calculate this for loading the sales order, as I mentioned before, it's 10 units. And for saving the sales order or this particular transaction, it is going to consume around 20 units. So on a total, it will be around 30 units to load and save one particular transaction record. So I have closed this particular loop for loop by adding a simple log within the loop. So to keep track of for each and every single record, if I load and save, I want to know what is the remaining usage in this particular script. So after this loop, I'm going to add another log. So which is going to give me the final remaining usage once the script ends successfully. So this is the high level of the code. So what we're going to do is uh, just to keep track. So what we're going to do is I'm going to set this particular field called memo with the I value. So let's say if this record is getting loaded for the first time, let's set the value as one for this memo field. So at the final stage, when the 334th time, if the record is getting loaded and saved successfully, we're going to set the memo value to 334. So let's upload this code in NetSuit. To make this video faster, I have already uploaded the code here. So in order to make these things faster, I have already created the script record as well. And I have deployed this particular script called Swiss Script Governance Usage Unit Limit Check. And if I go to the deployment, so right now if you see the status is not scheduled. So to execute this manually, I'm going to click on the edit and I'm going to click on the save drop down and I will click save and execute. So let the script run now. I can see the script is in queue and now script has started processing. So let's wait for the script to complete. So now let's check if our script has completed its execution. Okay, now our script has completed the execution. And let me open the deployment. And if I go to subtype called execution log, I can see the script has completed and I can see the remaining usage is now minus 20. Now let's take the example which we tried. So for 334 records, it would consume around 10,020 and the remaining will be minus 20. And that's correct. And we did not get any error at this moment. So it has crossed more than 10,000 units, but still we are not getting any error. So now let's try this another scenario, which is 335 records and let's see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I will go back to the script and make this as 335 and I will save this script. If I come back to this particular log, we can see the remaining usage is minus 20. So what does this mean? So does it save the record after setting this value? Because if it has reached this load, it would have reached around 10,000 units at this point. And when it tries to execute another API called save, since it's already consumed 10,000 units, we should have got some error, right? But we did not get any error. So let's check this particular sales order. If it has successfully saved, we should be able to see the memo value as 334. Now let's go back to Netsuit. And this is the sales order. And let me refresh the sales order. And I can see the memo is 334. So which means Netsuit has allowed to use the save API and it has successfully saved this particular record sales order without any problem. So the moment you load the sales order, it would have reached 10,000 units. The moment you save this record, finally it would have reached 10,020 units. So after this, we just have a very basic API, which is remaining usage, and we will not consume any units as I mentioned before. And that's how we have arrived at this particular calculation means the remaining usage is minus 20. So now continuing with the example, now we're going to try for 335 records and let's see what happens. 
so let me remove the unwanted codes and save this and re-upload this code i'm gonna go to file i will click edit on this now let's go to the deployment and i'm gonna remove all the logs so that i want to see the fresh logs again and if i go to the deployment and i'm gonna click save and execute now to execute this script again one more time now let's check if the script has completed its execution okay now the script has completed the execution so let's check the deployment and as i said before i will be navigating to the execution log so i'm gonna click on execution log and now i can see there is an error in schedule script which says script usage script execution usage limit exit so what has happened here so last record which has processed successfully is 334th record so when it tried for 335th record particular point i think we have got this particular error so now let's go to the sales order uh, this is our previous execution which is at 334 let me refresh if it has updated to 335 no it has not updated to 335 as per our scenario when it reached 10,020, we did not face any issue, but when it reached 10,050, we got an error. So now let's see what happened in this scenario. So when, so for example, we'll take the index as a 333. So let's say it is looping for 333rd time and it is going to load the sales order and save the sales order, which is around 30 units, right? So if it is 333, and if we multiply it by 30 units, so, so far it would have consumed around 9,990 units for 333 times if it has loaded and saved. So what happens if I try to load it for 334th time? Let's see. So in this case, it has already consumed 9,990 units. Now if we try to load it, it would be like plus 10 units for this. And now it will be like around 10,000 units so far. So at this point, we expected maybe it will break, but what happened is it has allowed us to save the record for another 20 units because it just reached 10,000 units but it has not exceeded the 10,000 units. So now it is allowing us to save the record with this plus 20 units and now it would have become around 10,020. So now let's say when it loops again, so for 335th time if it tries to load the record and as of now the system would check whether it has exceeded the usage units yes for 334th time itself it has consumed around 10,020 units and it would have definitely crossed the 10,000 units limit and now if the system tries to perform this record or load api definitely it will throw an error called as usage limit exceeded so we have seen this for 335th time hence we have received the error so how to handle this usage limit exceeded issue in schedule script so in Swift script 1.0, we add an API called as NLAP yield script. So it would look something like this, where it will check the remaining usage. If it's less than 50, it would just start using the NLAP yield script and it would just resume where it left in Swift script 1.0. In Swift script 2.0, we don't have an API equivalent to NLAP yield script. So in this case, in NetSuit, we have an option of n slash task module. So in the task module, we have an API called task.create. We can make use of this task.create and we can specify the type as schedule script and pass all the script ID and the deployment ID and we can submit that. So in that point, the same schedule script will run one more time. But does it resume where it left? No, it will not resume where it left in suit suit 2.0. The suit script 2.0 for rescheduling may look something like this where we will pass all the script IDs and the deployment IDs and we will finally submit for rescheduling. But in order to resume where it left, we have to manage it in our own code. We have to add some specific kind of logics in order to continue from where it has left. The other way to handle this kind of usage limit exceeded issue is if you feel uh, there is a huge number of data you have to process using a schedule script and that is going to take a lot of time, I would suggest better to go with a MapReady script because MapReady script has a very good number of usage limits. I have not covered what is the usage limit in this video, but we will see what is that MapReady script in our upcoming videos.